Neal of Massachusetts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to be recognized first on a point of personal privilege. Um, for what purpose? I would like to move that the conference committee postpone its work and activity until the new senator from the state of Alabama is sworn in to office so that he might cast a vote based upon the precedent that was applied with the election of Scott Brown in Massachusetts in the Affordable Care Act. I second the motion. Thank you. So under the rules of the conference committee, that uh, motion is not uh, available, and we will continue. Might I be allowed to question the ruling of the chair? So, Mr. Neal, at this point, I'll recognize you for your opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In light of last night's election, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do not believe that we should be holding today's meeting. In fact, I think it's imperative that we respect the will of the people of Alabama and delay any further action on this tax bill until Senator-elect Jones can be seated. This situation is not unprecedented. As recently as 2010, during the debate on the ACA, my state of Massachusetts elected Scott Brown in a special election to succeed Ted Kennedy. Following the election, we heard strong words from Senator Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Republican Party, in which he, quote, stated emphatically, I think the message of the moment is that the American people all across the country are asking us, even in the most liberal state, Massachusetts, to stop this health care bill. What did Democrats do? We waited and respected the will of the people of Massachusetts. Quite simply, even when it was hard and against our own politics, Democrats did the right thing and allowed Senator Brown to cast a vote on final passage of the ACA. I hope we could do the same today. Turning to the tax bill, the Ryan McConnell tax package is a bad deal for the American people. This legislation raises taxes on millions of middle class families, increases the national debt by more than $2.3 trillion, and eliminates deductions that help Americans afford to go to college, buy a home, and pay for medical expenses. From kids with disabilities to students pursuing a higher education to seniors with Alzheimer's, this bill punishes Americans at every stage of life. And as the New York Times reported this weekend, Given the Republican shift as to how they will tax income, the tax code for the first time substantially will punish the wage earner while providing massive benefits to corporation shareholders and partners. Mr. Chairman, we can do better, and this is, if nothing else, a missed opportunity. Democrats will focus on tax reform that provides relief to all members of the middle class with a tax cut that, unlike the Republican bill in front of us today, would actually provide them with some relief. Our Republican friends also claim that their bill helps small businesses. That's not what I'm hearing for business owners back home in Springfield, Massachusetts, who have been excluded from much of this relief. Let me also take into account the unique circumstances for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. They have suffered terrible devastation and are still in the process of rebuilding and putting the pieces of their lives back together. The last thing they need is to get hit again. Finally, Republicans have shown their cards, and they're going to go after Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid next to justify this tax cut. They argue that we can no longer afford these programs after yanking $2.3 trillion from federal expenditure. And I hope, Mr. Chairman, before we see the final version of this bill, that we'll have a full discussion and debate on the potential that has been suggested in media accounts that the top rate is being moved from 39.6 to 37 percent to accommodate individuals in America who are now complaining about the elimination of the state and local tax deduction with back